What's going on guys, it's your average consumer and today we're gonna to be doing a real day in the life with the Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra. So what you guys are seeing right now is the front facing camera and it's actually shooting in 4K. So the video and audio quality that you guys are seeing and hearing are all coming directly from the phone itself. So on paper, this quality should be really good, but we're gonna put it on the computer with a bigger screen and kind of make better judgments. I'll have like what I think right down here. But today we've got a lot of stuff to do. We've got a couple places to hit up, people to meet. I'll take you guys along with me as we test out all the features and all the different things about this phone. Uh, but quick battery update. The phone is at 80% and I've been using it for about an hour and 25 minutes now uh, since I've been doing emails and you know, just on the phone all morning, just doing a bunch of stuff. So I've been using it for a little bit. We're at 80% and uh, we'll see how long it lasts throughout the rest of the day. And after wrapping up my morning at home, it was time to head over to the studio. All right, guys, now we're in the studio. Uh, it's about 12 p.m. We're about to head out really quickly, uh, but I wanted to go over some of the questions you guys probably might have with something like the Galaxy S20 Ultra. So this is a much bigger display than we typically see on smartphones, 6.9 inches. And I will say just using it in the hand, texting, doing emails, that kind of stuff that I was doing before and uh, playing games doesn't feel bad at all. Where I am a little bit concerned though is that I haven't tried this with a case yet. I don't rock my phones like this because I'm scared of them breaking. Do we actually have a case here? Did a company send this one? Let's, let's double check. Oh, oh, I think we found one, but this one this is not a small case by any means. Oh boy, okay, two piece right here. Whoo, yeah. Once you throw a case on this guy, it becomes a very, very, very big phone. Like, I'm not even gonna lie, it's kind of hard to get over. Let me try putting it in my pocket here. See how it peeks out? That's a lot, that's a lot of phone right there, guys. I don't even know how to get this case off now. All right, let's guess we're using the case today. <laughs> but with no case on you, when you wanna put it in your pocket, this is kind of what you're dealing with. Pretty big phone, but still, like, this is fine. And I think it's pretty safe to say the size isn't for everyone. What is nice, though, is that you can always offer the S20 or S20 Plus, which is smaller, but still have the same power for performance, minus, of course, the cameras and battery. Okay, guys, so right now we're in the Uber. We are headed to the convention center. We're gonna meet up with Bandai. You guys know I love Bandai, Gundams, Dragon Ball Z all that good stuff we're gonna get to see some figures today now this is a great looking display samsung makes amazing looking displays uh, but what's nice about this one is it supports 120 hertz refresh rate so that means when you're navigating your phone you're going through your apps everything looks really really buttery smooth and that 120 hertz refresh rate really comes into play when you're playing games so I have one of my favorite games here dragalia lost now this game supports 120 hertz refresh but it honestly doesn't look like it. But for some reason, when I'm playing the game on this phone, it looks like it's not taking advantage of the 120 hertz. But when I play a game like Subway Surfer, it looks like it should. Subway Surfer also supports this kind of refresh rate, and it looks awesome. So I'm kind of curious what leads to that. If I were to play it on something like the Razer Phone 2, there's a drastic difference. I actually have it on me. So guys, check this out. I have both phones side by side and chances are you won't be able to see the difference on this video, but with my naked eyes, I can see a pretty big difference. And I'm actually seeing some frames drop over here on the Galaxy S20 Ultra. This is smooth as butter over here. I don't even understand. And it's just so bizarre because this thing runs Subway Surfer way, way smoother than it does on the Razer phone too. Razer Phone 2, I'm seeing some drop frames here and there. And this is not to be some kind of comparison between these two phones by any means, but they're the ones that I have that both have that 120 hertz display. Now the screen on the S20 is great and I'm glad they did away with the crazy bleeding edges on the sides. They're much more manageable now, especially while watching videos. And I honestly wouldn't mind if Samsung did away with it completely. But for now, it isn't as bad as it used to be. Like I said, watching content on the screen is as awesome as you'd expect, especially with a larger display. Overall, the size is large, but it doesn't feel like it's trying to be a tablet or anything. And as you guys can see, gaming on smartphones is pretty important for me, and Samsung introduces an amazing feature that allows you to lock an app so that it doesn't close or reset when you go into other apps. Now, this is a big deal for anyone who loves to go into a particular app, 
but hates when it resets and you lose your place due to jumping into another app. This used to happen to me all the time while gaming and stopping to take a quick picture of something, I'd always come back to a reset game and it was really annoying. This is something that happens to me all the time on my iPhone, so I'm stoked Samsung introduced this feature. Although I do have to say, with all the RAM that this thing is packing, you might not even need to use this feature, but having that extra security is definitely nice. But with all of that aside, going on with our day, led us to the Javits Center where I was able to meet up with Bandai to check out their latest Gundam and Dragon Ball Z figures. All right guys, so right now we're at the Javits Convention Center. So this is the Toy Fair, but Bandai and Namco are here. So I'm going to be checking them out, seeing what kind of stuff they have. And I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of opportunities to take advantage of the camera and take some cool pictures. So let's get a, let's get a shot with the minions because they're here, why not? All right, so let's see what that looks like. I mean, that's a sharp photo, man. Now the dark areas are pretty dark, which isn't a bad thing, but like, I wonder if it's gonna keep crushing blacks. Let's do this guy. I mean, it's not bad. This looks pretty good right out of the camera. Really, really sharp. And the depth of feel isn't bad either. I like this. All right, cool. Got some minion shots, why not? All right, guys, so right now we are headed over to the Bandai booth. Well, they already got like a Pokemon over here, Bandai over there, and take a look, guys. So that's what we're gonna be taking some photos of, cause that's the kind of stuff I'm into. So look at this, guys. A Gundam that's bigger than me. You know I gotta take a photo of this. And this is, this is so, sh like, that's something that you always know about Samsung cameras. So sharp, and you can zoom in, and you can still see everything in a ton of quality. That's insane. Let's make this like an awesome shot. Why not? All right, we'll go low to the ground and boom. Tell me that doesn't look crazy. That looks great. Jay, check that out. I know you see it. <laughs> so we got the man Godzilla over here. So much detail once you start zooming in. And honestly, that's the kind of quality I've learned to expect from Samsung devices. Now, colors. Not super saturated, Samsung has moved away from that for some years now, uh, but you can go ahead and edit this in post if you want. So over here we've got some Dragon Ball Z model kits. It's crazy that those even exist, but this is gonna be a good test of dynamic range. You guys can see like how we've got like this white bottom over here. There are some dark areas around the figures like the hair. So we're gonna see if we're gonna be able to pick up that detail in the really bright and dark areas. Boom, got one shot. Ooh, the dark. I gotta say, I feel like I feel like this camera kind of crushes the blacks a bit. Like the areas that are dark come out pretty dark. Look at Vegeta's leg over here. You can't see any of the muscles while over here, the guy's muscles for days. So you're kind of missing out on that. I'll show you guys if I edited this and brought up the shadows a bit, what I'm talking about. So it's kind of weird. I'm noticing that the autofocus could be a little hit or miss. I'm getting a lot of shots that are a little bit blurry. Like if I just try and take a shot here, let it autofocus. Like this is not a sharp photo. This is out of focus. But like if I were to take a picture of Jay right now, let's see. Yeah, you're good, Jay. All right guys, so right now I'm a little bit further inside of the toy fair and I just came across some high school friends of mine, Carlissa and Lakin. So they have this cool company called World Girls, this awesome, awesome dolls tons of variety in terms of ethnicities and stories. So this is really, really awesome stuff. I'm gonna take a picture of this stuff because there's so many colors here, so many styles. I think it's a good opportunity to, of course, test out that camera, make sure we can kind of pick up on everything and see how it all looks. Damn, this looks awesome. You can see their faces look awesome. You guys can see the clarity on the dolls. I'm gonna keep catching up with these girls and we'll move on to the podcast that we're gonna join on in just a few minutes. So guys, check this out. You see that big old Pikachu down there? We're gonna see just how far we can get away from it and still grab a good picture with this 100 times zoom. All right, I guess we gotta stop here. This is where you do registration and whatnot. So what's cool about the Ultra is that you get all these different focal lengths. You can go extremely wide, get all of this, but you can see down here, you have all these different multipliers. This is the normal wide angle lens. Two times, four, 10 times. But once you go 30, you can still see that Pikachu very clearly. And then we'll go 100 times. You can still see the face. Now, check this out, guys. You see this little screen over here? It'll basically tell you where you're pointing the camera. So when you're zoomed in like this, 
you're so zoomed in you can't really see where you are but with this little window over here it'll pretty much tell you the pikachu i can see over here so i just want to point it in that area and now i found pikachu without it it would be extremely hard to find your subject so let's take this picture if i could just keep it still there we go let's see what that pikachu looks like 100 times zoom guys that's pretty impressive so right now we're waiting for our uber we're about to head over to saradici's spot and shoot her podcast but before we get into the uber i shot a really random picture of this hand sanitizer and like I said before, you see how this looks like he's just wearing all black? Well, the actual guy was wearing like a gray sweater and black jeans. And if you look at this, it just looks completely black. So you're gonna see those really dark areas look completely dark, but with some editing, you'll be able to kind of change that look. So you guys can see for yourself, this camera takes some really detailed shots, but depending on your preference, you might not like the over sharpening that Samsung does here. Now, what I don't really like so far is the amount of contrast you get in a photo. It tends to make shots really dark in the shadowy areas, which can lead to missing out on some detail. Also, I'm not too crazy about the autofocusing from my testing. I have had a few shots come out blurry that required a few retakes to make sure I got what I wanted in focus. The average person may not notice this right away and and could walk away with a potentially bad shot but samsung has put out a statement saying that they're going to be updating the camera to fix some of these concerns so while the camera isn't a crazy performer in my opinion right out the gate with this kind of hardware and samsung looking into addressing these concerns the future should be promising but it would have been nice to have it work the way we expected right out the gate but when it comes to that 100 times space zoom i don't think a ton of people will really care to use it but in the right situation it might actually come in handy. All right, guys, so I'm actually about to test this out in the real world. I don't know if that's my Uber over there. I can't see. So we're gonna use this uh, camera like a magnifying glass and see if I can see the license plate. I can, and that is not my Uber. So we're good, I don't have to run over there. Who said that this 100 times zoom wouldn't be useful? There we go. It's not your Uber, Judd. But all jokes aside, the Super Zoom can have some functionality as a telescope of some sort, but definitely not something you'd use for good photos. Usable photos probably stop around the 30 times zoom mark. All right, guys, so we are here in Sarah Dici's office. I love we're just hopping into it. Yeah. So here, we can't move a lot because the ground is really squeaky. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. I like it though. Yeah. So guys, I actually just learned from Sari here that when you go into the camera and you wanna access the 108 megapixels, you actually have to go into the aspect ratio and change it. It's a really, really weird spot. It's so easy to assume that it's going that to be on. Shooting. Yeah, because yeah. you would think something like that would be in the actual settings, not the aspect ratio. You would also think that would be one of the first things that you, they tell us in a briefing. Yes. <laughs> but. <laughs> and funny enough, the same thing goes for the front facing camera. You also have to go into the aspect ratio, switch it to 40 megapixels, yeah. so. Because if you think about it, these files are 20 megabytes, 30 megabytes. So not everyone's gonna want those huge files for everyday phone pictures. That makes sense. Um, so you have to go in and physically switch it off, but you know, it really wasn't well known, very hidden in the settings, but here we are. This is real stuff, people. <laughs> it's a really weird place to put this setting, but hopefully this was as eye-opening for some of you as it was for me. We recorded a dope podcast, and if you guys are interested in checking it out, I'll have Sarah's channel and podcast linked down below for you to check out. But finally, it was time to get back to Jersey for us. Okay, so now we're back at the studio. Shooting the podcast was awesome with Sarah. Uh, I really want to test out those high megapixel photos that we just learned how to actually turn on. Uh, but before that, let's do a quick battery check. It is 6.51 p.m. We have 26% left and we got a screen on time of four hours and 30 minutes. So this will easily hit the five hour mark, but I am curious because Marquez was able to get, I believe like five hours and have about 40% left. Maybe I game on my phone more than Marquez does and maybe I've been using the camera a bit more. So I'll give you guys an update in just maybe a few seconds on how the actual battery performed overall. But we gotta test all the megapixels that this thing has. Okay, so we have our megapixels on. We got our DualShock 4 controller here. We got a little HDR shot going. Ooh, this autofocus, can we? 
Man, these are some really contrasty shots. But one thing I will say, they're not, they're really not that saturated. So it's pretty interesting. I think maybe Samsung is moving towards more editable photos. Uh, but yeah, so far, 100 megapixel photo looks pretty good. Now let me pick this guy up. Let me take a picture of him. Boom. Dang, that's like, it's a, <laughs> it's a crazy clean image, I will say. Look at that. So that is really nice and sharp. But look how much I zoomed in. All right guys, so we threw it up on the computer to take a good look at it. Just take a look here. You see those dark areas that I've been talking about all day? Those dark areas are super dark. But if I were to take the shadows and completely bring them all the way up, that looks more acceptable. And if I wanted a little color, like right there, I say that's accurate. But if I were to revert everything that we did, see that difference? Now, if you're not a photo editor, I don't know how you'll feel about just snapping it and getting this shot, you know? Maybe professionals are the only ones looking at a camera like this anyway on a smartphone, but it would be nice to have really good images right out of the camera that doesn't that don't need any real tweaking. I'll definitely run some more tests though. After trying out that 108 megapixel shot, I still felt pretty iffy about the camera, so we'll just have to wait and see where things go when that update hits. All right guys, so it's pretty late right now. Wanted to wind down and go to bed, but my tooth or something going on in here is killing me, so I'm gonna go buy some Aura Gel. I am going to see if I can get myself fixed up here. All right, I am not seeing anything. These are chapsticks and whatnot. All right, so this area is not what I'm looking for. Maybe I need to look in the toothbrush section. All right, that's what I need, oral care. All righty, this is what I'm looking for, that Aura Gel. Thank God. Now, I was able to try out that single take mode with my dog Cookie later that day, and it's still one of my favorite features on the S20. Being able to take a 10 second shot that gives you a small library of content to choose from can be great for people who don't know how to take advantage of all the different camera modes that Samsung offers. It's definitely worth trying at an event if you wanna get a variety of cool shots without putting much thought into it. It really does help to move around your subject while doing this though, so you can get some good variety. And then we did cap off the day with about six hours of screen on time with a 5,000 milliamp hour battery. This is about what I'd expect, especially considering we were running at 120 Hertz. If I drop that down to 60, I'd probably get even more battery life, but I definitely wouldn't give it up. So I am happy with the six hours of battery life, especially with all the gaming I did and the amount of times I used the camera. Now, my overall thoughts with the S20 Ultra is that it's obviously a beastly phone with a ton of technology behind it. I do think that some work needs to be done on the software side of things though, so we can fully take advantage of that camera. But outside of that, it leads to a pretty awesome experience in terms of the crazy fast performance, that beautiful 120 Hertz display, which I will always choose over the Quad HD resolution since it really changes the way you view your phone when you're using it. And I'm really glad phones are moving in this direction. Not to mention all the other bells and whistles this phone has like PowerShare, where you can wirelessly charge another device with your phone. But the question is, is it worth all the money? As of right now, it's hard to ignore the issues that I've talked about, but outside of that scope, you'll have a hard time finding a device that's truly capable of everything the S20 can handle right now. This phone is a serious beast, and it's crazy that we're gonna see this kind of performance across the entire line. But that about wraps it up, guys. Let me know what you think of the S20 and how it performed with a comment down below, and I'm gonna catch you guys in the next one. Till then, it's your average consumer. Peace.